And why we're here, um, location is critical. Um, you know, that little ad hoc kind of overview, again, is extremely biased to people that are focused on the local space. But it's ridiculous how much people are using their phones for, for local um, behavior. One in three of all the searches that are happening on the, uh, Google from a mobile standpoint have a local intent. Um, so that's, you know, 33% of every search on Google is location specific, which again, just speaks to what people want to be finding. It can be looking for local business, um, it could be getting driving directions, all the things that you could imagine that an individual consumer in their daily life are um, using their phone for. And, you know, as close to the consideration process as possible. So when you think about running a business, and if you're in the local space and trying to service a SMB kind of um, uh, client base, there is no better way to make that phone ring, to drive people in store, is to have a very robust um, advertising program or advertising platform that allows you to tap into that consumer behavior. So that's the kind of the, the high-end overview about some of the data and the statistics and what we're seeing. It's just really, hopefully, you at, at a minimum, if you're to remember one thing, it's that it's just huge, right? I mean, it's a big opportunity. There's a lot of stuff going on. I'm now going to run through the Google ad products. Um, again, you can either think of this as ways to think about what's been successful and what at Google we're developing so that they can be similar products that you are developing for your own businesses um, or potential ways to um, get distribution from the Google audience and some of the Google products for some of the SMBs that you may have um, in your portfolios. So search ads, kind of a no-brainer. Most people should be aware of uh, Google being a search engine and our AdWords product. Um, that goes and extends very well to, um, uh, to mobile. People searching for whatever they want to be searching for. You can be driving traffic to a website. Um, you can be you know, displaying a business and a phone number. Um, and you can also have ways, whether it's couponing, maps, et cetera, uh, that attempt to drive people to the physical location. So search is really... Um, that most lean forward um, defining statement of I want to find something locally, you should be trying to have some kind of ad product or be positioning your SMBs in that marketplace. So click to call. We've seen um, click to call within mobile is a uh, very significant kind of new development that's um, been deployed at Google. Um, this is a fairly new product in the last quarter or two, I'd say. Um, you can see here, this is just an example of probably somebody searching for something travel related, um, so maybe a little more national, um, but you could imagine this for local businesses, and we'll show the example on the right. Um, but basically you do the search, and this is called a phone extension. So you end up with um, a unique phone number that shows up below that text ad. Um, and on average, we're seeing, and this is, these are you know, kind of, I think, published numbers, that the click-through rate for people that are adding that phone number, um, anywhere from five to 25% increase in their normal click-through rate just by adding this phone extension at the bottom. Kind of a no-brainer, it's really, is that all that innovative? Um, I don't know, but if I'm looking for a local business and I search for, let's say on the right there, um, sorry, I can't read that, Lou's Italian Restaurant, you know, it's great, I can call right there from my phone and make a reservation. Um, the one on the right-hand side are called uh, location extensions, and you can see that basically the ad just unzips and will show a map and show the physical location of that restaurant. So two different ways that you can kind of have more sophistication within Google search, AdWords on mobile. One, phone extensions, two, location extensions. Um, and both very effective at getting that person closer to the sale, getting them to walk into that establishment or making a call to perform some um, uh, activity or service that your SMBs want. Hyperlocal distance information. So when we talk about what's unique about phones is that capability GPS. And so we're able to ascertain um, oftentimes physical location um, and can actually pinpoint down to a very specific level um, how close a particular store might be. So if you're searching for REI um, and you want to you know, go buy some product or service that REI has, um, this will actually show you. You can see that little blue uh, blue balloon icon that is in the search results um, or in the AdWords ad. Uh, and that's an indication that it's telling you that there is actually a physical location that's very close to you. Um, you can click on that, it opens up, and it's going to actually give you the information that you need to get your butt down to that store, essentially. Um, so again, very effective at 
closing that gap, um, the final mile, if you will, to you know, drive people in store. Um, this is another one, so uh, location extensions with multiple locations on GMM, whatever that means. GMM is Google Maps for mobile. Um, people will search on either google.com from a browser standpoint. They will download the application and search within the application, and a lot of people will actually just use the native maps functionality. If you're on the iPhone, that is Google Maps. Um, if you're using Google Maps, you can perform location-based searches um, within the maps, and that's what this is. So if you perform a search, um, it will actually, and in this case, it's asking for Sprint stores. Um, an ad can show up at the top. If you click that little small ad that says show all Sprint.com um, stores on the map, it's going to show every store and trying to make it easier. Um, so if, if you're get into the store and you're at work and maybe you want to go on your way home and stop by, you can actually pick the store that's most relevant for you. So again, just giving the consumer um, more information to help them go do what they want to be doing. So basically, ads on Google Maps. So that's the general search stuff. Fairly straightforward, again, um, incredible search growth that we're seeing, uh, fairly innovative and unique products that are coming out that allow to close that gap. Um, now we're going to talk a little bit about display and why display can be important. So, you know, we know and we've talked about, again, the fact that people have their mobile devices with them at all times. Um, it's pretty scary. People have the alarm clock on their phone. They're going to bed with their phone. It's with them at all times. You know, um, I take the ferry in in the morning in California. It's very California of me, I think. Um, People are just always buried in their phone on the ferry. They're doing it on the train, on the ride home. They're playing games in the airport. It is with them at all times. Um, and that phone is used for both utility, um, so whether it be for your job and looking at emails, but then also for a lot of entertainment. It can be playing games. It can be looking up movie times. It can be looking for restaurants. Um, there are numerous ways to engage with consumers throughout the day um, to build brand, build awareness, but also you know drive very specific performance goals, whether it's getting somebody to call a number or getting somebody to go into a store or going to a website to perform some, some action. Um, so, you know, when you think about how can you be with that user at all times, search is certainly one way because it's very lean forward. I want to find a restaurant in downtown Dallas. That's a very specific call to action. But the way to engage them on a more frequent basis is to be with them at all times. And that is, you know, a very effective value proposition. And the mobile device is very good at doing that. So um, you can certainly run standard ads, again, uh, demonstrated before. Um, Text-based ads on a CPC basis. You can run banner ads on a CPM basis that are very rich and compelling. Um, and this can be on the mobile web, whether it's a more of a feature phone um, or a high-end phone. You can reach people in applications. So again, uh, applications, 250,000 plus in the iTunes store. Um, um, 80,000-ish in Android, um, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of time spent in applications. Um, it's a phenomenal way to uh, engage with those individuals. Um, you can be running ads here um, to initiate um, any kind of call to action. You can try and drive downloads. So I don't know if anyone here has uh, applications themselves for their businesses. Discovery is a very challenging thing um, in the iTunes store and in Android. These are very effective ways at increasing the install base of your application. You are targeting people that have the phone. You are targeting people that use applications. And you can have a very simple call to action to try and get people to download that app. So very effective for both Android and iPhone. Um, just like some of those ad units that we talked about with search for um, uh, click to call and location extensions, both of those are available kind of in this uh, more display, contextual environment. So example-wise, you can see somebody's on a screensaver application, um, and there are ads there. It can be the location extension that drops down, um, or it can just be a simple click-to-call. So ability to engage with consumers, again, throughout the consideration process um, and tapping, that, tapping them throughout the day and throughout the things that they're doing. So those are the ad units. Um, hopefully that's helpful to at least kind of, I think, set the framework for what at Google we're focused on, um, uh, how you could potentially either leverage these um, through Google, or what you could be developing for your own businesses that have value um, to the SMB world. Um, so very straightforward search and display, CPC, um, CPM, 
text, rich media, all kinds of different ad formats, formats but really engaging that user um, throughout the day um, as they're consuming um, and uh, using their device. So in this section, we're going to talk a little bit about, I think, what people are doing from an SMB standpoint, where we've seen some good examples and I think some best practices for folks to, uh, to focus on. Um, so I think uh, the four main strategies are, one, obviously drive traffic to a mobile landing page. Um, pretty straightforward, and we'll talk more about this. Two, promote application downloads. I touched on this a little bit, but I'll talk a little bit more and share some examples. Click to call, no brainer, um, and driving traffic to maps. So again, kind of beating the dead horse here as to what the opportunities are, but I want to share some examples of people live in the wild who have been doing this. So driving traffic to a mobile landing page, I can't overstate this enough. Um, from a sales perspective, and we're out talking to businesses, if you don't have a mobile landing page that's optimized for mobile experience or a mobile browser, it's really a terrible experience. You're setting, up, setting the stage for um, uh, trying to drive people to your competition. If you go to a mobile landing page, um, it's rich, it's informative, there's a lot of interesting things that you can do on that. If you have to pinch and zoom and navigate and do all the types of things that um, the, the site requires you to do um, from a PC standpoint, it's just not the best user experience. And so if there's one thing, you need to make sure that you have the mobile assets and the mobile infrastructure um, to provide that experience. So that is, I think, one of the most fundamental things that most companies should be thinking about um, when you think about mobile. Two, just like in online, um, you need to develop specific goals. Is it lead gen? Are you trying to sell a product? Are you just trying to generate a phone number? Are you just trying to generate a page view? Identify what your goals are, and then um, just as important again as online, you have to learn ways to track this stuff. Um, we've seen this movie before. It was, the on it was the online space. In the early days, people just threw up a brochureware of websites. They weren't all that effective. Over time, they started to learn about display. They started to learn about search. A B testing and analytics and optimizing and all the things that people have come to do today to drive sex successful business practices, those are the types of conversations you need to either have with yourselves or internally to say, what is our mobile strategy? What's our goal? Do we have the right assets? Um, how are we going to track it? And then how are we going to continue to try and broadcast this out there? We want to test and iterate and test and iterate until we get to the point where um, we have a really efficient machine running that we're um, driving value for our business and for our customers. So from a kind of a case study standpoint, while not SMB related, 1-800-Flowers, this talks to the effect of building landing pages. Um, again, an interesting um, position uh, that I've sat in over the last you know, years um, is that uh, you, know, you meet with a lot of companies and some people either sit on their hands and wait for the change to come or there are people that are being very aggressive and pushing this within their organization. And there are some really early adopters, and there are some people that really haven't even thought about it. Um, early adopter here, 1-800-Flowers. They launched a mobile website to enable customers to order flowers on the go. I've used it personally myself. It's great. Um, the most significant thing here um, is, I think, the quote that you see from the folks at 1-800-Flowers. Um, and it's, he basically says, for now, there are fewer advertisers on the mobile platform, which means less competition and lower prices. We're at an advantage. While others are learning about this emerging platform, we're already here. And it's a simple statement, but I can't, again, reinforce the notion of having to move fast, having to move quickly, having to innovate. Again, we've seen this you know, in the early stages. You think of the disintermediation type companies in the online space. It could be Amazon. It could be eBay. It could be all of the online aggregators that moved into that space very quickly understood the value proposition, understood the tools and the analytics, and moved very fast, and they built businesses for themselves. In the advent of the internet, nobody knew about all the brands that exist today. That's what's, I think, the opportunity from a mobile standpoint, and we're seeing that, um, and is really, I think, a fundamental thing that most people should think about. If you go back and look at that Mary Meeker Morgan Stanley um, presentation, one of the sections that she talks about is that there's going to be wealth creation and wealth destruction with this new mobile paradigm. Um, and these, this is a very small um, example of that, is that one company that's saying, hey, if we're not on that device and if we're not aggressive, um, then there are going to be other people that are out there and you're missing the potential to engage with consumers um, and build a brand and build a business in this mobile ecosystem.